my grandfather was one of the ones that would go to church and act like he was holier than thou, but he was taking me to a dark room and molesting me as a little girl. And I thought, if there's a real God out there, then why is this happening to me? That's how I felt. My first book came out in 2016. I've been on Good Morning America, 2020, ABC, Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz. My grandfather was one of the richest men in town, which is my mom's dad. And he owned a whole bunch of West Virginia, not just in the Princeton area, Montcalm and different areas. And he had his own car lot and his own gas station. Very, very well known. And what a lot of people don't understand is people want to look at the poverty level for abuse, but it goes on in higher levels also just as much. My mom suddenly needed money because she was a stay-at-home mom having affairs while my dad was working three jobs to bring in a lot of money. And she started prostituting. Not only prostituting to other men, but prostituting to her own dad. Then the question came, my grandfather wanted me and Teresa, my sister. So my mom started prostituting us out to my grandfather for money. I never thought she didn't love her kids. I think she didn't know how to love because her dad warped her mind. People say, well, how did you turn out normal? Well, I think people have different personalities and things affect people differently. And it also has to do with the relationship you have in God. When I was, I was 10 years old, I was sitting in the back seat of my mom's little rabbit car and she was picking up one of her clients from the um, downtown Princeton from the bar that she would pick up to prostitute. And I was terrified of this man. But I remember sitting in the back that night and I prayed, I said, God, if you're real, I said, I, want, I don't want this man to show up. And I knew that that was one client that always showed up. And if mommy was late, she took a beating. He was, you know, he, he didn't put up with that. He never came out. Well, my mom got mad because she needed the money and she sent people in looking for him. He never would come out. So that was the last time we ever saw him. And I told God that night, I said, I'll serve you for the rest of my days. And I have not been perfect. I've messed up a lot of times, but I do love the Lord and I do pray a lot. And I do my best to live right. And that's where my journey started with God. Because before that, I felt like it was all fate. Because here I am going to church every Sunday. My mom's prostituting. My parents are divorced. I'm beaten all the time. I've lived with a lot of secrets that tortured me, made me lose a lot of sleep. I've had a lot of nightmares that nobody knows about. But since my parents' death and I've been able to get a lot out and I've wrote my book, I've seen a big difference in me because I've been able to release all that that's been built up in me all those years. 2015, I was asked to co-author Resilience in the Storm. And there's a little story behind that. I remember being 16 years old and I was praying at the altar in a church of God in Bristol, Tennessee, and I was bawling and I was praying because I was like, God, why is this happening to me? Why, why does my life have to be like this? And I was just hollering out. And this little old lady didn't even know me. She didn't even know my name, walked up to me. She said, I don't know what you're praying. I don't even know who you are, but God said one day you're gonna write a book and make a difference in other people's lives about your story. When I got asked to co-author that book in 2015, I was actually on my way to church in Cleveland, Tennessee, and I was, I was like at a red light and I was stunned. Like I was like, wow, because it brought back that memory. And so that's how I started writing. People was reading my book. People, it was selling like crazy and people was reading my book and I was getting a lot of feedback about how, wow, you know, it's inspired me or whatever. But what really, you're asking what changed me, okay? What really was the first time I was on Dr. Oz after my first book and, um, a little girl wrote me. She said, you inspired me so much that I was able to go tell about my dad sexually abusing me. And that meant a lot to me because I thought, wow, you know, our stories are, and that's why the Bible talks about your testimonies. And it is important to tell because it brings a lot of people out of bondage. And so, you know, my story that I thought once was just trash and didn't mean anything. And here I am on TV telling it because everybody wants to hear it. I looked at it a whole different way after getting that message on Facebook was I thought, wow, I just made a huge difference in this little girl's life. That's why I continue to tell my story. If this story inspired you, take the steps to change your life. The first step is always to say, Jesus, help me.
Come On, Let's Go distributes hundreds of similar stories of lives changed by Jesus Christ. If you want to be part of this vision, go.